I'm Dino Benicki. I'm from Cape Town uh, in South Africa. I'm going to be talking about computer vision in recommended systems. And uh, sort of just a little bit about my background is I built a lot of recommended systems for large retailers in South Africa. I'm kind of like the village bicycle when it comes to building recommended systems in South Africa. Um, and they always have the same problems. So this talk is not representing any sort of company or client that I've worked with. It's just kind of a side project my friend and I have been working on, and now it's reached a stage where we think that there's actually a lot of value in it. It needs a bit of work, as every AI project does, but uh, I thought I'd just share some of the learnings that we came through, we came, uh, came about to. So typical recommender systems, you know, you've got your heuristic approaches, popular products, uh, or new products, you know, you recommend that to customers. It's a good starting point for a lot of retailers because they don't have something, so it's a, it's a good place to start. Um, to get a little bit more complicated, you get neighborhood-based approaches, and that's when you're looking at customers who are similar. They're similar because of their purchase history, or they're similar because of their demographics, or the way that they interact with some of your products, or your e-commerce store, and then you can make recommendations based on that. And then another uh, popular way of doing it is saying that some products are similar. So these products are similar because they're both black and leather, and you know Batman likes to buy black, black shoes, so a good recommendation to Batman would be a black leather belt. Uh, or it would have to be a utility belt for him. Um, then you get even more complicated approaches, which is model-based, and that's where you're looking at large sets of data on your customers, and you have a machine that sifts through that data and it finds patterns without explicit instructions, um, and then can generalize those patterns, and you can make predictions, which is what some of the talks here spoke about. And then based on those predictions, you can try and move the needle of where customers are buying things. So there's a lot of problems with these approaches, Ah, okay, wait, first giving you a couple of examples here. So here's an example of three different companies who have done these traditional recommender systems for. Um, you know, these are all based on what other customers, like this target customer likes. Uh, this voucher is using a reinforcement learning approach to try to find what voucher to give customers. Um, the same with the uh, FMCG food retailer in the middle. There's a lot of demand forecasting and cyclical forecasting. Um, so there's a lot of models. All these models are quite dependent on historic data, um, and it kind of limits you in what you can do because yeah, it's very dependent on history. So we know that customers' purchase uh, behavior changes. So oh, sorry, uh, if you don't have that history on customers, it's it's a bit of a problem. Um, you require a significant amount of data for some of these machine learning models. Uh, if you don't have customers that have been buying the same things, it's quite hard then to match similar customers together. So there's a whole lot of problems, and, and every time I build a recommender system for a retailer, you know, there's different ways that we patch these problems with different techniques or different models and approaches. So based on this information and some other information which I'll, I'll allude to now, so. With a lot of these customers in the fashion industry, not FMCG, because they you, you buy, you're buying regularly, in the fashion industry, we found that uh, with some of the clients, people are only buying every six or seven months. So you already have a problem of collecting data on those customers. With another uh, client that I work with, a bank, they were tracking customers' credit card spend at retailers, and from that information, we could see that people are actually buying from, from retailers more regularly, like every month or every two months. So there's already like a disconnect that people are actually shopping more frequently, they're just not shopping at the same retailer every time. So we're missing, we're missing data points. The other thing that we came up with is, you know, working with other retailers, we can see on their e-commerce platform, the conversion rates on, on e-com is only around one or 2% on the actual store. Um, whereas other work that I've done with retailers in store, measuring foot traffic and conversion from the foot traffic, traffic and then you know, uh, predicting future revenue from, from different stores, we could see that the conversion rate in some stores is a lot higher than 1%. So there's a, from all these different projects, I kind of piece together that there's a disconnect between what's actually happening in the, the store that the customer can, sorry, the, the client can actually see and what the customer is actually doing when they go to a physical store. So uh, the, the two key things there is people are actually buying clothing more than that retailer can see. And the other thing is conversion rates on e-commerce is a lot lower than on a physical store for lots of different reasons. But one of the main reasons is uh, on an e-commerce store, it's actually quite difficult to find a product. So a customer might be looking for a blue suit. 
they go onto the e-commerce store, they look at two or three products, they can't find the blue suit, it's quite easy to just change to the next tab and look at another customer. Whereas if you go into a store, there's a, there's a bit of a time commitment to that. There's normally a sales assistant who is guiding you through the process of buying a blue suit. So based on all these data points all over the place, I thought there must be a better way to make these recommendations uh, more contextual and more relevant. So my friend and I, we started to work on a recommender system, a patch basically to recommendations because all these recommendations have pros and cons, but one that would be based more on computer vision. So what we did is we, we chose our favorite retailer in South Africa and we scraped all of their 60,000 products and we processed all those products through an embedding process which Celine has kindly spoke about before the lunch. And basically what that means is I have a very limited vocabulary as a human. So when I describe what I'm wearing, I just say blue suit. Like I, I don't know any other, it's got two buttons, it's a two piece suit. But a computer will have maybe a vector of hundreds of binary numbers to explain the specific image. Um, so it, it maybe has in some ways a better understanding than me around what makes that blue suit or that jean jacket a jean jacket. So initially what we did is we just pumped all the images into um, a neural net and outputted a whole bunch of binary numbers and we did a um, cosine similarity distance between all the images to see if we could find similar garments and we hit lots of problems. So the first problem we had is, you know, sometimes a model is wearing the product, sometimes not. So these images are already different. So what we then started to do is patch our pre-processing framework. So we then had a process that said, okay, let's have a classification model. If, uh, if the model is, is in uh, the image, uh, sorry, first we did, <laughs> we pulled on the e-commerce store, there might be five different products. So we first had a, a system that said, of those five products, what should be the hero product that we actually use? In that case, there might still be a model wearing that product. If a model is wearing that product, create an image segmentation, identify the garment that the model is wearing, remove that garment, and then you've kind of isolated the garment and then you can make it more comparable. There were still problems with that because depending on how the model is standing, there might be occlusions on the garment. Um, I've worked on a, a GAN project before where we were doing deep fakes and depending on how a person moved their face, it would create occlusions on the face and we used some tech there to conceal the, the occlusions. So we kind of brought that across and used that there. And we were thinking maybe in the future to also use a GAN to try to remove the item of clothing off of the, the customer. Um, but anyway, we had all these pre-processing steps to try and make the images as similar as possible because then when we created those embedding steps, it would make it easier to then um, make them comparable, right? So we, we did that for, for retail, for, for fashion. It worked pretty well. But then when we were actually looking at the results, it didn't work well for items that don't have like a unique visual or distinct style. So if you think of maybe a block of soap, you know, comparing different blocks of soap, there might, there might be characteristics that make them different, but from a visual perspective, or in my, in my opinion, they kind of all look like soap. So then we started to pull in uh, text, which our, our German friends went very in depth in for the watches. We just did a very simple approach here. So any text that was available on the e-commerce store, we pulled that in as well. So then we actually created a multitude of different embeddings for every single product and then depending on what embeddings were available or not available, you know, we could then scale that up or scale that down to make the model a bit robust when it was making recommendations. And those recommendations were things like similar products because you got, you got that. We also created style embeddings which I can go into a little bit more detail around like the specific garments. So this garment has a specific style to it and we created uh, three different style embed, yeah, three different style embeddings for every garment and then you can uh, match things together in, in a style it with uh, recommendation or a shop the look recommendation. And then also um, if there was any text available that alluded to a brand, we could also extract that information out and make a recommendation that says, hey, shop your favorite brand. So the idea around this is the customer is already looking at a specific product on your e-commerce store. So there is already some sort of intention uh, that the customer likes that product, but maybe the customer is unsure. So show her or him similar products to try um, increase the probability of conversion. And then if the customer is going to convert, you know, try upsell them. So start, you know, they, they're gonna purchase this jacket, try start it with a, a pair of jeans or shoes or other items from that brand. So you're increasing the average order value of the basket. Uh, so here's an example of sticking in a seed image. 
And what the algorithm would do in the, in the background is a whole bunch of processing steps. So it says, okay, a model's wearing this garment. We need to remove the garments off of the, the model. And then um, uh, if there are any occlusions, fill out the occlusions and then find similar products uh, that are in the catalog of the, um, the tenants, basically. So there is a limitation to this because let's say your input seed image is like a unique onesie uh, that is orange and maybe that's the only onesie that the, the client sells, you're not gonna find similar ones. So it might just put other things there that find similar, or you could put a limitation on the distance to say, hey, there's actually nothing um, within a certain bound of the, the distance metric, therefore don't show anything. Uh, another thing that we did is we, we said complete the output. So um, I did a lot of reading into what Pinterest and ASOS have been doing, and Pinterest have been creating a, a thing that they've termed shop the look and also complete the look. The, the shop the look is if they take an image from social media and then they extract all the image, sorry, all the garments that are in that image and they try and match it to clothing in their catalog. They call that shop the look. Complete the look is you have a seed garment. So the dress is, for example, a seed. What, uh, what would complete that look of that dress? So the way that they did it is um, they, they created a deep learning model that they, they called a triplet loss. And basically what they did is they sampled from a large data set of already created outputs that um, stylists had generated. And uh, what they did is they said, if uh, uh, two products appear in the same outfit, uh, there's a good chance that they share some sort of similar style and they should be matched together. And then they would randomly sample another outfit, uh, a garment from an outfit, and put that into the learning process and say like, hey, this is not a good style. And then you can push and pull the model towards what would be a good style. So we kind of replicated that paper, um, but we found that there were limitations. Um, so we added in some other rules on top of that to say, uh, you know, if you are trying to construct this outfit, also have an estimation as to the gender of this um, image or of this garment so that you don't try mix genders. And then the other thing that we did is we kind of looked at um, how does uh, color play a role in outfits and then extract that color and try not to um, add colors that would maybe clash in the outfit. The problem is I don't know anything about fashion or style, you know, so this is all from, <laughs> from an engineering perspective. Um, and at the end, I, I kind of uh, produced thousand examples and I, I grabbed a person who was a fashion expert and I sat down with them and, and showed them some of the examples. So. Um, this is an example of, you know, sort of styles or outfits that it could generate from that. Uh, the feedback that I got from a professional stylist was, you know, these are, these are good, but some of them are too similar. You know, so what people want to see when you're showing them outfits is how do I take this dress and style it down or style it up? You know, how do I wear it in different uh, situations? And the other, the other comment that I got is um, some of the recommendations could be a little bit outdated. You know, so the thought process there is the, the data that is used for training these models, there needs to be a proper pipeline so that you make sure that you have relevant, up-to-date um, outfits that you can create these style embeddings from. Um, and then the other thing is, if, uh, if two items are too similar, maybe they shouldn't be put into the same recommendation because you know, if you've only got three opportunities to show the customer a desired outfit. You don't want them to all be very similar. You want to mix and match uh, to give a, a better probability that a customer will like one of the three in this example. Uh, the other thing you could do is personalize outfits based on this. So if you have purchase history of a customer, you could see, well, what, what have they purchased in the past? So you have a sim similar um, item embedding that you could use as a seed to generate an outfit for the customer. And you could also then tailor that to something like the season. You know, so if, if you know you're going into summer now as, as Europe, you might make sure that the input seeds are summer uh, clothing, and then you can generate summer outfits based on that. Oh. And then as a, as a byproduct from that is uh, shop the color. So we had a, a system to just extract. Sorry. Oh. There's a bit of a delay in the clicks. There we go. Uh, so we had a process to extract color out of the, the ah, fuck. 
have to be patient here. <laughs> so we had a process to extract color out of the, uh, the images, and we were just using that in constructing our outfits and also the similar recommendations. But then when I showed it to um, some people in retail, they said, oh, actually, we want something like this, because the one problem that we have is when we make mass orders from um, you know, Asia for our products, they often come with uh, product information that is not consistent. And if they just uh, do a quick query on their database, they can see that they've got 900 different colors in their database. And it makes it quite diff difficult to create then search filters uh, on those different garments. So this is kind of just like a byproduct from that where you could say, okay, instead of having 900 products, let's whittle that down to 12. Um, and then that can be part of your search or part of your filter when looking for a specific product. The, the other thing that we did is we then could increase at an exponential cost, unfortunately, um, how many colors to consider from the image. So some clothing, although the one at the bottom is actually just two people, but some clothing have like a bi uh, color to it, and then you can actually match on that bi color. And we also went a step further to, to three colors, but as you get to four and five, it gets exponentially more expensive to do that, and when you're doing it for 60,000 products, uh, it becomes quite tricky. Again, you're kind of limited by what the retailer has, you know, because you, you're only recommending from a pool of 60,000 other products, and maybe half of those are already the wrong gender, and then half of that is maybe like the wrong product category. So, you, you know, you've got to kind of take that into account. Uh, this is kind of what we're looking at now and working on this is actually then, because you can stick in any seed product, it doesn't actually have to be a product from the um, retailer's website. You could stick in a social media image. The problem with this is the consistency of the images, which some of the speakers have spoken about before. So if the image is poor, as in like poor quality or random backgrounds, or the, the person is standing like this or to the side or something weird, um, it obviously impacts the quality of the recommendations because it makes it harder to extract the actual garments out of the images. But, you know, for example, like these are pretty straightforward where the, the customer is standing kind of facing the camera. It's quite then easy to um, run through the, the process that we had already built and find, okay, these are the three garments worn in this actual item. Let's make a best estimate to find the closest matching garments in uh, the specific retailer's back catalog. And you could kind of add this as maybe a feature on your website to say, hey, this is what social media influencers are wearing, uh, that match it to products in our catalog, and you know, th this would work best. Um, I would stick a stylist in the loop here, you know, so have a human in the loop to say these are the, the images we want to show or not show, um, because you, you kind of want to stick to your, your, your brand and, and what, what they do. So visual search, kind of same thing, is uh, you actually just sticking an input image that you've selected. And then here's some practical examples for, for a retailer in South Africa. So this is a, a blue t-shirt, and then you can find, you can see it's recommending other t-shirts. Um, the, the way that the embeddings work is there's multiple embeddings for the model wearing the, the product, so the product removed from the model, the product gone through a GAN process, the, the text embeddings, and then how to play with all those weightings, I'm not sure. So, so I've just stuck in like a heuristic approach here and just said, you know, like evenly weight all of those embeddings, and you can see, even though it's not recommending other blue t-shirts, it is recommending NASA t-shirts of the same cut. Um, and then you can see that it's, it's tried to complete some outfits on that. These outfits are a little bit samey, you know, like there's other ways that you could maybe wear that t-shirt which is not captured in those outfits. They're all pretty much the same. It's like jeans and belts and, and tackies, like a, a casual uh, uh, aspect or way to wear it. And then you can see like the color extraction is, is quite a strong blue and you can match it across different product catalogs. And then it's just, yeah, this is, I end my talk with a few more. I shouldn't have put the watch example in here after the German guys. <laughs> but here, this is using uh, also some text and images to recommend watches. But to my defense, this uh, retailer doesn't have 11 million watches. I think they only have 200. So these recommendations are limited by that very tiny pool of watches. But you can see even with the watches, you can construct outfits from it. It seems a bit random, but you know, there is some uh, style attached to that watch, and there's some styles attached to those garments, which makes a good match. Um, and then again, the color gets extracted from the, the, the face. Uh, 